Are we broadcasting? Yep, you're all set. Great. All right. So seeing a presence of a quorum, I am calling this meeting of the Town Council Committee on Outreach, Communications, and Appointments to order at 9.36 a.m. We are at just quorum, but we are expecting uh, Darcy Dumont and Sarah Swartz to be joining us soon. Uh, so there are several documents in the packet. Um, I have no announcements to make at this time. Um, and so we will jump right to agenda item three, discussion of sufficiency of the pool for planning board appointments. So just so we all are on the same page as to where we are, um, we do not have any vacancies on the planning board right now, but we do have uh, three members whose terms are expiring at the end of June. And per our process, we treat any uh, expiring term as an impending vacancy and treat it as if there were a vacancy. And so we are currently in the process of looking to move forward with um, appointments and or reappointments to the planning board. That said, you have uh, a document in your packet um, and apologies for getting to you so late last night. I was um, optimistic that things might change over the weekend and so had held off on posting it, um, but that optimism was uh, not warranted. <laughs> um, and so, hi Sarah. Um, let me bring up this document. Hey Evan. Okay, so I am going to um, share my screen. We've gone through this before, so you know you know the drill with this. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to walk through this document that I put together, um, and then we will talk about uh, what our actual situation is. So, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Evan. Um, it looks like Darcy is added. She's joined as an attendee. So yeah, I just bring her in. Okay. Uh, hi, Darcy. So for Darcy and Sarah, just uh, we're going to look at the uh, we're moving to agenda item three and we're looking at sufficiency of the pool for the planning board. So I am going to uh, share my screen so we can look at this document together. Um, someone is yelling outside of my house. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, so we're all familiar uh, with this document because you have seen it before um, a few times. And so this first section here is just uh, copy and pasted from our process uh, as amended on 427 that describes how we determine sufficiency of the applicant pool. And then I, I have, as I have in the past, broken that information down um, to address each piece of this. And so the first piece is that there needs to be a vacancy notice published and that vacancy notice must be published for a minimum of 14 days um, per the charter it has to be published 14 days before we can make an appointment. But per our process, it has to be published 14 days before we can decide that the pool is sufficient. That vacancy notice was published on April 21st. And so it has been published for 14 days, so we have met that requirement. Uh, the next has to do with um, collecting CAFs, uh, although there is a mistake in here because our new process says OCA shall collect CAFs submitted over the preceding three years, uh, which I did. And so I um, collected from Angela and from other sources that I had, such as my email inbox um, and, and past information all CAFs that were submitted um, from April 21st, 2017 to present. So the past three years using the um, vacancy notice posting as the start date. Uh, the only ones that I took out of the pool were um, people who we know no longer live in Amherst or never lived in Amherst to begin with. Um, and also people who are currently serving on the planning board. So the next piece of this is where it gets a little tricky. So um, we say that uh, 
in looking at sufficiency of the applicant pool, we look at the number of applicants relative to the number of vacancies or impending vacancies, and we strive for more applicants than there are vacancies. Uh, there are no current vacancies on the planning board, but there are three impending vacancies, as I said before, in that there are three members whose terms are expiring at the end of June, and so those are impending vacancies. At this time, we have fewer applicants than we have impending vacancies. And I will share that document with you in a moment. Uh, we do not have any demographic information. And so we normally say that we strive for demographic diversity, but we have no demographic information to assess demographic diversity. So we cannot do that. Uh, the current needs of the body to be appointed. Uh, I did have a conversation with planning board chair, Christine Gray Mullen. Um, obviously there is no vacancy, so there is no current burden placed on that vacancy, but through our conversation, she did repeatedly stress that there has, there is a burden that has been placed on the body, um, by the lack of long-term experience members of the planning board. She is someone who has four years of experience or slightly more than five years of experience, four or five years of experience on the planning board. And I cited that as the most experienced member, it has been very difficult for her because she still feels like she doesn't have all that much experience. So, as you are all familiar with, at this point, I would normally have a paper copy spreadsheet to show you the responses and who is in the pool. I don't have that uh, in hard copy because I'm not with you all in person. Um, I am going to email this document to you. Remember that this is not considered a public document because our process says that we do not disclose names or numbers of applicants. Um, prior to the posting of the interviews. And so I'm not gonna put it up on the screen. Um, it's not part of the packet. It is going to be emailed to you. And so if you check your email, you will find that there. Take a moment to look over that. Um, take a moment to look that over. Um, we can talk about it again. We cannot use, we're not gonna use names or numbers, um, but you should find that information in your email now. I will give you a couple minutes to look through that, but I would like to um, offer my opinion, which is that at this point, we should not declare the pool sufficient to proceed to interviews. I, I personally do not believe um, that the pool is at a point where we should say that we are ready to move forward to interviews, but I will give you all a chance to look over that and see if you concur with me. So take a minute, look through it, um, and then just raise your hand when you're ready to give your opinion as to whether you have questions or whether you feel as though we are or are not uh, ready to move forward to interviews.
Okay. Um, George, you have your hand up. Looking at this list where you have only one individual who has expressed um, a willingness to be considered and we have three impending vacancies. I don't see how we can. Okay. So do we have other thoughts on whether or not we feel as though we want to move forward? Uh, the alternative being we don't declare the pool sufficient at this time and we um, try to engage in some more recruitment. Has it, can it, has everyone seen the spreadsheet? I know, Sarah, you said you, it can't, it doesn't, it's not loading for you. It's not, Evan, and I haven't had, inter I've had troubles with my internet since like last week. And I, so I don't know if it's that. It's like showing that it's spinning. I can see it, but it's just not loading. I can, I can try and send it again. Um, uh, Alyssa and then Darcy. I can see it. I'm, I'm sorry if I somehow was reading and not listening to a full explanation of what all the coding means. And I realize we're in a very awkward position here because we've not generally, well, certainly we as a town council haven't, but in the past appointment processes, we have not generally publicly discussed who's willing to be reappointed and who isn't but mm -hmm. everyone is going to want to know the answer to that question. So if you could speak a little more to that concept without feeling like you're divulging people's personal information, although I don't know why it would matter if we're divulging their personal information, mm -hmm. given that they're already serving. So I, I'm just a little confused. With regard to strictly uh, members who are seeking, who are potentially interested in reappointment. Correct. Right. So we have um, three. Um, I'm sorry, I, I need clarity. What, what are you looking for? Okay, so in the olden days, okay, which is not today, but just as the way my brain is working is that in the olden days, we might mention at a, at a meeting, oh, X number of people who are up for reappointment to a particular body are glad to be done because they have other things in their life and others are willing to move on. That information is not clear from the spreadsheet as to whether or not people have expressed a definitive opinion one way or the other. And so I'm wondering what you feel like you can say about that. And maybe you said something about it already, but I didn't understand it. So, okay. I mean, when it comes time for the town council, which is a completely different thing to run for election, you know, eventually people are gonna announce whether or not they're running for reelection. So this is not the same as that, but I'm right. not sure why we're not able to be clearer on which of the currently serving are interested in being reappointed or if some of them are feeling like there's some other things they need to get sorted before they can answer that question. Yeah. Okay, right, great. Um, yes, yeah, so the three current members are part of this table. Um, this table is organized by date of CAF submission, um, which in retrospect, maybe I should have pulled the three members who are currently serving out so you could look at them separately. Um, but you will notice the three members uh, who are whose terms are expiring are David Levenstein, Christine Gray Mullen, and Michael Burtwistle. Michael Burtwistle, as you can see, has expressed that he is interested in continuing on the planning board. Um, Christine Gray Mullen, I do not have a definitive response from yet. Um, we had a conversation about um, selection guidance uh, that you'll see. And so we have had a conversation. At that point, she had uh, was not ready to state whether or not she was um, going to continue. Um, and I don't want to give too much private information, but there's some personal things that she's currently dealing with. Um, um, David Levenstein has notified um, um, Christine Brestrup and the town manager that he is not interested in being reappointed.
So he's notified them, not their appointing authority? That is correct. I, I will say I, I, I got that literally minutes um, before the OCA meeting started. I, I emailed Paul and I said, heard anything from David yet? And he said, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's a whole different thing. Um, but we do, I, I actually changed David's answer um, literally as I was making the email to send this to you all. So, um, uh, so we do, so that's where we're at with incumbent uh, members. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I mean, I realize they might feel more awkward than they have in the past in terms of more attention to them than was necessarily paid in the past. And certainly we all know that with the town manager appointments right now, he's just offering reappointment without any process like we're going through. So it is definitely different. And planning board, of course, when these people were appointed, you know, historically, was a town manager appointment with just select board confirmation. So, you know, everybody's in a different place than they were before. Yeah. Uh, Darcy, your hand is up. You're, uh, you're muted. Wasn't letting me unmute. Um, <laughs> So I had the same confusion that Alyssa had there about the existing members. Um, so we're not clear on how many seats we're actually looking for. Uh, at this point, no. Um, at this point, we know that there is one member who is not seeking reappointment, so there will be at least one vacancy um, if we don't move and the 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 spreadsheet that you shared the purple lines indicated they weren't no's they were just what, a, what i didn't the, understand the or the gray gray yes whatever <laughs> that is. um you know i'm a big fan of color coding um so right so the green is we have a confirmed yes the the orangish red is i have reached out to them and they have responded uh that they're not interested the gray is i have reached out to them and either they haven't responded or the response has been i don't know yet um and so the the gray is we don't know one way or the other um what i will say um is some of these grays um, you will notice how do I want to put this some of some of these grays are people who have been contacted again and again um, in the past couple rounds of appointments and have never responded and so I am responding to that I am I'm reaching out to them every time um, but never getting a response and so um, it seems a little bit unlikely um, but we're reaching out to them anyway. And that's specifically true for some of the older CAS. What well, what's your process for um I mean, did you email them once or did you call them or what did you do? Every person has been emailed at least once um there's one member who I had a, a separate conversation with because I saw them. Um, but yeah. Um, Seems like more than one email would be warranted. Yeah, and I and I can do that. Um, how do I want to put this? Yes, I can do that. Um, I, I will say, given what I know about many of the people who are in gray, it is likely that they are not interested or will not respond. Um, that doesn't mean I can't and won't reach out to them again. Um, but you will probably recognize some of those names. Um, I recognize some of those names um, as people who are uh, likely not um, interested anymore.
So our purpose at this moment right now is to decide whether or not we can vote to declare the pool sufficient to move forward. My personal opinion is we're not at a place where we can do that yet. George, you, you echoed that, um, others. Darcy? No, I'm, that's, that was a mistake. <laughs> oh, sorry, lower hand. <laughs> um, I don't know, Alyssa or Sarah, if you want to weigh in here. Sarah, were you able to get that? Yes, finally I was able to get it. And I would say that, um, um, no, I don't think we have a sufficient pool at all, I would say. Okay. Uh, Darcy. So existing members who want to continue can simply continue until there is an, uh, an interview process, correct? Yeah, I mean, so their terms don't expire until June 30. And so um, we do have, we do have a little bit of time here. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that, and, and Alyssa will correct me if I misspeak here, I'm sure, but my understanding in the past has been if we hit that ex term expiration date and nothing's been done, they kind of just continue until we uh, appoint. Now, they, they might decide, no, I want to be done, and then they might step off. But um, my, my hope is um, that we can um, do this by June 30, because it, we, it gives us about a, a month and a half, which on the one hand is not that much time, although you will also remember with ZBA, we went from a pool of basically nothing to actually a pretty rich pool over the course of three weeks. Um, because we actually engaged in some pretty heavy recruitment efforts. Um, so I think with this, to me, the message from what we're talking about now and what you see is um, I, I've done a little bit of outreach around planning board, um, person to person, and not in my capacity as chair, just in my capacity as a human being. Um, but I think that what this shows us is we probably have to engage in a little bit more active recruitment um, than we had been. George, I see your hand up. You are all garbled right now. Yeah, sit back a little bit, George. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with your, your microphone, George, but you sound like a monster. Um, <laughs> Is this, any, is this any better or is this that was a hundred percent better all right i think I, darcy was right i leaned in and that was a mistake so what did you say because i had no idea what you said you're now you're muted we need to do recruitment okay <laughs> that was it that's a lot of effort for that yes okay um Alyssa, your hand is up so I'm feeling pretty stuck because truly given the, you know, for those watching in the future, we're in the middle of a pandemic here. And so I don't know how we're supposed to recruit effectively when people who in some cases are stuck at home and in other cases are essential workers and are under way more stress than usual. Um, and everyone's under a huge amount of stress for a variety of reasons, blah, blah, blah. But if people aren't getting an email when some of them are stuck at home, I, I don't know how we're going to get better responses. And I don't know how you saw someone to speak to them, Evan, but. Um, it was far away on a walk. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so we can't do our, all the usual things we would be doing at say the farmer's market and every place else where we pepper people with, well, have you thought again about applying to planning board? So, I guess my hope had been walking into today's conversation that the people who were currently serving would feel it was possible for them to continue purely so that we could just like move on and be talking about next time around, because I don't see how we're going to fix this problem when we've 
already recruited. We are in no good position to do any in-person recruiting, which we all know is the best thing. Even a distant sidewalk conversation is way better than an email. And I just am feeling very stuck. I also totally appreciate and respect that absolutely no planning board member should feel pressured to continue. They've been doing an immense amount of work. They've been continuing work during the pandemic. Everyone's life is in chaos. And it's completely a reasonable thing that people reevaluate their lives at this point and say, you know what, that's not what I'm going to be doing moving forward after July 1st. So to Darcy's point, yes. And what you said earlier, of course, they can continue to serve. And if, you know, this, this, drags on a little longer technically they can legally continue to serve but evan's point was good that they might not want to because they have made other choices in their life and are just looking forward to that june 30th date and no blame absolutely great respect for all the work they've been doing so i feel like you know on a normal month we might say sure let's recruit more but what on earth does that look like yeah and i think this is where so and i will say um that normally I would have been sort of proactively trying to talk to people, right? And I hadn't really been, one, because there's a lot of stuff going on that is occupying my time, um, but two is because I had been sort of implicitly operating under the assumption that if the three members were willing to continue serving, there wasn't necessarily that pressure to have to to, to, to do a whole lot of recruitment, not saying that we would just reappoint, but we at least sort of had a backstop um, with David saying he's not interested, we need to do at least some outreach. And so um, I guess, you know, the, the best thing I can think of is just reaching out to our networks and seeing if there's anyone um, just spreading the word and seeing if there's anyone who is uh, who might be interested. I, I will say um, some of the people who came back for as a no, um, or at least one of them, I think two of them, um, their no, I'm not interested, sounded like there's a lot going on right now. I just can't do it at this time. And so I, I do think that not only would the pandemic limit our ability to recruit because we can't physically be asking people, but I also think that there are a lot of people who are thinking in this in this time right now, in this uncertainty, they're not willing to make that commitment either. So I think recruitment would be very difficult, but I, I'm not sure given that there will be a vacancy um, that we have a, a better alternative. George, is your, well, Darcy, is your hand up residual or is this a new hand? Um, residual. Okay, George. I hear Alyssa loud and clear, but I'm not sure that we have much choice. Um, and it may be all in vain, but um, um, there is the phone. Um, some people I would reach out to personally that way. Um, some obviously I don't know, um, but there are a couple names that at least I could, you know, reach out to. Um, some of them, uh, actually I'm doing outreach for my other job um, and uh, we have a, uh, a large number of candidates at the moment, or at least larger than this. And uh, so some of them might also potentially consider it at some point. I wonder if Bachelman could also be enlisted. Um, maybe he's already, he's obviously aware of it, um, but obviously he sees a lot of uh, names and a lot of people. So that's another source. But I think we just have to, we just have to do our best. We have to get at it um, and see how far we can get. Um, we have at least one position we have to fill, and it may be more than one. Darcy. I guess I'm interested in knowing in your conversations with the existing members whether our process, uh, the 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 uh, specter of of having to go through the interview process influenced influenced them in possibly not wanting to do another round? Um, as far as the current members go, no one has said that outright to me. Um, that could be uh, part of Christine or David's calculations. If it is, it just hasn't been expressed to me. Um, I will say that there um, is at least one person who's in gray who, when I talked to, um, said they weren't sure. And part of that uncertainty um, was that they were really uncomfortable about having to do the whole 
public interview um, thing. So I don't, I didn't hear that from any incumbent members. I have sporadically heard that from folks I've reached out to um, in the public. Um, okay, so here's where I think we are at with this. We're not ready to declare this pool, uh, Alyssa. All the people who think Zoom meetings are fine are people who are not being recorded for posterity. Um, that said, this is not a public document. At the same time, while I appreciate George saying, you know, well, we got to work the phones, we got to work the contacts, there are people on this list who, for a variety of reasons, we should not be pressuring to be part of the pool. And so if the outreach we're talking about doing is simply having splitting up the people that are on the list and having us call them, they're literally people I would not want to have that conversation with. So if what we're talking about is finding some magical new way of recruitment that we've never had before or something else, but because someone fills out a CAF at one point in time does not mean they are obligated to respond, nor are we obligated to strongly encourage them to be part of a process. We should be absolutely willing to interview anyone who says they want to be interviewed, but if they are not meeting us halfway, I, there are people I simply will not chase down because I have a hard time envisioning that I would ever vote for them. Yeah, so I think that my thought process on this is I will um, follow up with the people who have not responded, um, as I've done in the past. But I think when we're thinking about recruitment, it really is, it, it, to me, my thought process is it's about looking outside of the list of people you have before you, because these are people who have not responded. Um, and so uh, we all have some semblance of a network. Um, and I think that if you know, I think that our our task as a committee. My thought on at, at this point right now is, um, we're not ready to move forward with this pool. Uh, we need to expand this pool, um, and so we need as Oka to take some time to think about who we might try to reach out to and network with to to try to encourage people. Um, someone, I think George asked about the town manager. Um, so that's the other thing. So when we had this issue with ZBA where we had a very small pool, um, this committee empowered me to reach out to the town manager and ask him to reach out to people who he had interviewed um, and who he thought could be interested or good for planning board and just let them know that we, that we were, or at the time of ZBA, let them know that we were looking. Um, that was a decision this committee made last time. Um, I will say that was a decision that probably yielded us the most new applicants. Um, we went from a small pool to an actually pretty sizable pool. And I would say a, a good number of those people were people who had been contacted by the town manager. Uh, so I'd be willing to do that again if this committee feels like that would be useful. Alyssa, I see your hand. Again, awkward phrasing, but when Darcy was asking very specific questions about, you know, how did you do the outreach, Evan? Did you call them? Did you write to them? How many times did you write to them? Um, let's bear in mind that when we asked the town manager this question, one, he's in the middle of a pandemic, like he was before, and two, it's not necessarily him that's reaching out to anyone. It's whoever he delegates to do that with. So if someone's concerned about the detail level of how the email's written, how the phone calls stated, what you say in the email, then they should also be aware that saying the town, asking for the town manager's help does not mean the town manager is calling up individual people more than likely in this scenario. So let's not over but sell exactly what's happening here. People are not going to be so thrilled to open an email from the town manager himself, perhaps. But, um, but at the same time, as you said, 
the yield was definitely increased. And I think whoever he delegates to do these things does a great job. But that's why I'm saying let's not concentrate too hard on exactly what those details are when each of us does the outreach, because it's going to be a mixed bag from whoever does it, whether it's town manager staff, whether it's us individually, et cetera. Any, so uh, is that uh, Darcy? Um, I just um, have a question, question about your list of people that said no, and the comment is that they're already on some other committee. Mm -hmm. Is that, that, that they said that was their reason for the re for, for no? Yes. For saying no? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I even so I mean, you'll they'll notice there are a number of people who uh, because there's so much crossover between planning board and uh, ZBA, even though we literally just appointed ZBA, I still actually reached out to all of those people and said, Hey, we're appointed for planning board, you said you're interested. Are you interested in the planning board? Um, and most of them said, I'm confused, you just appointed, <laughs> you just appointed me to ZBA. How much do you and some of them said, Do you really think I should serve on both? And I said, It's completely up to you. Um, but yes, every, everyone um, who's in red was asked and confirmed. I didn't make that decision for anyone. Uh, George. I'm glad to hear that because I had the same, uh, I wouldn't call it a dilemma, but I had to make the same decision for uh, uh, non-voting resident members. And I did what you did. I just contacted everybody and i'm sure there are many who are going to either not respond or ask me why are you contacting me you just put me on x board but i agree with darcy's point that she made a while back uh, that that's a decision to be made by the applicant not by us so i did the same thing yeah and there's always a chance that planning board is their dream committee they've always wanted to serve on and um they could leave whatever body they're on so so yes uh, um and every everyone who submitted an application that I had in the pool um, was was asked, um, and I did not pull anyone out without them telling me to pull them out. Um, so I, I do want to move on. It sounds like we're we're not feeling like we're ready to declare this pool sufficient. It sounds like we agree that there needs to be some effort of recruitment that may look different for different people. Uh, Alyssa, hand. Well, what does it look like? What's our homework walking out of here? We can talk about it at the end of the meeting. That's fine. I just want to make sure we have some focus on what that means. We each are supposed to report back that we called three people or whatever you want it to be. So, um, so I was going to say two things. So one is I think all of our homework is just to um, reach out to anyone. You can call, email, text, yell, I don't, whatever, um, who people you think would be good or would be interested or people you think that would know people who would be good or interested. I'm not going to give you each a quota to meet because we all know different numbers of people and different types of people. Um, but what I would ask is each member of this committee um, to reach out to people who they think could be good or could be interested or could themselves have a network of people who could be good and interested. Um, and, and you can reach out however you want and just direct them to fill out uh, anyone who's interested fill out a CAF. What I did want to ask is if you all wanted me to do the same thing we did for ZBA and ask the town manager um, to identify people he thinks based on his interviews uh, might be good um, and reach out to them. Um, of course, given the caveat that Alyssa said, which is, you know, he's now dealing with a public health crisis and so it might not be his number one priority to help us recruit for a town council appointed thing um but it, it was fairly successful when we did it for zba and so we could ask him and if nothing comes of it nothing comes of it um is that something that you want me to do or not want me to do either way Alyssa, is this a new hand or residual hand it's both yes i want you to do that yeah. George. I would like you to do that, yes. Okay. Darcy, Sarah? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. Darcy, we're good? Of, of asking us to reach out to people? 
No, of, of, of following the same process we did for the town manager, uh, for the ZBA of asking the town manager to think of people who he has interviewed um, who might be interested in, in reaching out to them and, and telling them if they're interested to apply. That's fine. Okay, great. So I will do that. Okay, so we are going to close the book on that discussion then. Um, and move on to the next agenda item, um, which is the development of selection guidance. So even though um, we are not moving forward yet with interviews, I do want to try and come up with selection guidance um, because I, that doesn't matter who's in the pool, but I also, excuse me, think that doing that might help us think a little bit more about um, who we might want to reach out to. Um, and it potentially could also be included in the request to the town manager to say, you know, here's our selection guidance. So anyone who you think would be good. So I think that even though we're, we're not moving forward with interviews yet, um, we can move forward with selection guidance. And so you have uh, in your packet uh, some draft selection guidance. Uh, no, why don't I? I can share my screen so we can all look at it on my screen. If I can pull it up. Um, so let me talk about this selection guidance once I find it in my thing. Where is this? Selection guidance. Oh, I'll just share it on a thing. Okay. All right, so you should be seeing my screen now. You should be seeing um, the selection guidance. It's also in your packet. Uh, you will notice the selection guidance looks very, very similar to the selection guidance uh, we had for planning board back in January. And I thought it would be, uh, it would make sense to use that sort of as a starting point. Um, so again, just to go through this, one criteria is taken from the criteria for a healthy multiple member body. Um, a through C are literally just copy and pasted from our process. Um, D, characteristics of, an, of effective planning board members are the ones that we came up with last time. Um, and then two is input from the body's chair. So here, you'll notice that this looks pretty much identical to last time. And the reason for that is when I reached out to the planning board chair, um, I said, hey, here was the selection guidance that we adopted in January. Um, let me know if you, you know, what you want me to edit, change, or whatnot. And so instead, I didn't ask her to start from scratch. I said, this is what you submitted last time. Uh, what, if anything, has changed? What do you want me to change on this? Uh, she said mostly that she felt like all of this was still relevant. Um, and she basically changed only two things. Um, one was 2E. Um, before it said useful to have design experience. Um, and she changed that to useful to have work experience in building design or construction, including development field experience in finance. And she felt like design experience was a bit too broad. And so she specified building design specifically from the perspective of construction field experience, but also um, one thing that she identified is uh, a missing component on the planning board at current that she thought would be useful as someone who has some finance experience um, from the perspective of sort of financing construction financing um, projects. And then the last thing um, was a new piece here, J that she asked to be added, which was uh, for continuity of historical and process knowledge, it is desirable to have at least two of the seven members with more than two terms of membership. And this reflected um, her statements about the difficulties of uh, chairing the planning board, um, having so few members um, who have been doing this for a while and, and some of the lack of institutional knowledge. Um, so as is 
um, our typical process. I have just put exactly what we got from the chair into input from the body's chair. Um, so what we want to look at really is um, one and specifically one D. Uh, I have a hand from Alyssa. So go ahead. I didn't mean to derail your train of thought. I simply wanted to, to get my hand up there, which was, it's different than in real life, right? Where you wait till people are done talking, hopefully, <laughs> um, is I would ask that before we republish this again, which we obviously are going to have time to do, would you ask Christine, because I know you can't just change it because that's what she said, would you ask her to clarify that she means more than six years? Two terms is a meaningless concept when we have one, two, and three-year terms. I'm suspecting based on her previous public comments, she means six years, and I'd like to put that in there, not terms. Okay. Okay. So I can definitely, you're right, because how we define a term matters. Okay, so yeah, so this is, this is what we got from the planning board chair. Other, with the exception of those two changes, everything is the same as last time. Um, so I wanna open up for discussion. Um, my hope was to adopt the selection guidance, although if it, uh, we, we can deal with how we might deal with Alyssa's request um, and adoption after. But I want us to focus really on one, since we don't change two, that comes from the chair, um, and talk about, is there anything that we feel um, as a body, uh, as OCA, that we want to amend, add, change on the selection guidance that reflects um, what we think is needed on the planning board uh, that is perhaps not covered by um, the chair um, or otherwise. And the one other thing I, I want to, I just want, I do want to note, because um, I just thought of it, is it, that I would want to change is uh, under the body chair, we have, um, we have, oh my God, why can't I find this now? Oh, um, 2H, it says already two lawyers on the planning board which of course was reflecting the fact of uh, we have enough lawyers. One of those lawyers is, is of course, David Levenstein, who will be uh, leaving the body. So um, we may also want to request, ask if she wants to revise that. This was given before David had announced that he was not seeking reappointment. So she was not aware when she said to, to keep this. Anyways, um, so opening up the floor to discussion about things that we might want to amend in section one. Um, so if there are things you think need to be added, removed, we can do that. Um, and if not, let me know that if you feel like this is fine to move forward, um, and then we can talk about potential adoption. Uh, George. It's my feeling that we have um, gone over this a great deal and talked about it a great deal. And since we're talking only about uh, item one, uh, which reflects all the hard work we put into it, I don't see anything outstanding that needs to be changed, altered, or revised. That's just my personal opinion, but I think this is, this is fine as we've uh, written it and uh, worked on it. Okay. Other, other members? I guess the, the one thing that, that came to mind to me is obviously all of this was written before we were in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, and I didn't know if that might influence um, anything and perhaps not. I, I reflect back to the conversation uh, that occurred with school committee uh, where I believe it was Councillor Shane who had said uh, someone who has, would have experience looking at budgets and thinking about the finances is newly relevant to me given the budgetary situation under the pandemic. Um, not to say that that's relevant, as that criteria is relevant to this, just saying that is there anything that you feel like have it now moving into both the global pandemic and also the potential for uh, our, our town to have some tough financial and economic times? Is there anything 
uh, that strikes you might be useful to have on the planning board. And I don't have ideas, just throwing it out there as a point of discussion that this document was originally drafted in a different time. Uh, Alyssa. Um, the finance piece, I think Christine Gray Mullen hit on that sufficiently. And if I, I don't want to pretend to know what's in Christine's mind, but based on previous conversations I've had with other plan with her and other planning board members, I'm guessing she's not, I mean, obviously no one's predicting a pandemic when they're writing this, but it's also that she's thinking about the practical aspect of finance in terms of helping the other members of the board out because that's always been something we've talked about throughout Amherst as we make decisions we talk about who's impacted right and we're often thinking of marginalized groups who are impacted who are not being included but we have also found that sometimes we aren't including people with actual practical on the ground experience of if I ask you to change this from 87 units to 62 units what magnitude of scale are we talking about in terms of financial investment given that we obviously don't have people open up all their books someone that just brings that perspective and so I will reflect back oh god once again to history which is comprehensive planning committee for a long time did not have any sort of developer on it and given that at one point our membership was pushed up to 28 members that didn't make any sense that we didn't have anyone with actual practical experience of building anything in Amherst that we were writing a master plan around and so we specifically recruited one which actually offended some people they thought no a developer should never have the ability to talk to us it's going to be much more difficult for someone who's a developer or even a property owner to, of any amassed property to serve on the planning board because of potential conflicts. It's not impossible, but it is going to make it trickier. It was certainly easier for something like the Comprehensive Planning Committee, but it was something that it was an important perspective that we weren't necessarily hearing otherwise. I don't think it's quite the same as the scenario with school committee needing, you know, to crunch numbers more carefully in some town councilors' opinions than in past years. Okay. Yeah, and my assumption is that's what Christine meant too, is someone who understands the finances behind construction and development for exactly that reason. So that when, so that the board, cause again, the current composition of the board, if I'm remembering correctly, right, is uh, an is Christine Gray Mullins, an engineer, David and Janet are lawyers, Jack, I believe is a hydrologist, uh, Michael is sort of representing the view of lay people, uh, Doug is a planner, and who am I missing? I'm missing one person, but I can't think of who it is. Um, but but no one necessary. What she really identified as the needs is are someone who is familiar with construction, uh, real estate, and sort of financing those projects because those are. Uh, oh, Maria. Maria is an architect. Sorry. So we have architect, we have lawyer, we have hydrologist, we have engineer, we have lay person. Um, but given what they do, she said where they really have a lack of knowledge are people who are familiar with real estate, construction, development, and financing of those projects. And that would be a, a useful area. So, um, yeah. Um, all right. So anything that we feel needs to be changed in one, Darcy or Sarah? I'm okay with it right as it is right now. Okay. Darcy? Yeah, no, I think we hashed this over pretty much in the past and uh, um, uh, I'm relatively satisfied that B says members bring new outlooks. Okay. Um, so he here's what I want to do. So. I do want to try and adopt this so that we can check one of these things off. I recognize that um, 2H that says already two lawyers on the board might want to be changed to reflect that one of those lawyers is leaving. And also um, uh, Alyssa's point about J of just confirming that Christine means six years um, and not two terms. Um, uh, Darcy. Yeah, I thought we were just talking about one. Um, two, um, I actually feel pretty uncomfortable even having 
this section included because um, because it gives an unbelievable amount of power to the planning board chair to like pretty specifically state uh, what her preference is and um, and direct us toward uh, particular people or particular types of people, which I, feels wrong. And if we went through the whole process in number one of really trying to make sure that we're not, um, we're, we're assuming that everyone's going to be open-minded and we're not pointing anyone to any particular agendas, et cetera, then to have her have it, be able to state just because she's the chair, she can state an agenda in her list under B. Um, so um, I know that some people don't think that's an agenda, but um, she's she is stating that she wants people that have a certain uh, position. Um, and that I don't think that's fair to have that in our criteria. Um, and there's also a lot of redundancy between A and F. Um, I don't know why that is, you know, both of them is there. The other thing I'm just, you know, this is all making me realize that, you know, n the list that we just looked at to see whether the um, pool was sufficient did not indicate with any of those people, any of the substantive skills that any of them have. So how, how can we ever decide whether we have a sufficient pool unless we know these things about the people? This is a separate issue, but as far as approving this list, yeah, I have a lot of problem with, with not having the input from the chair be a lot more general um, and less specific about exactly what she wants. What's to prevent her from having a favorite person that she wants on the board and then then changing the her <laughs> changing her input each time we have a have a new um, opening, having her change her input so that it it defines the person that she wants. That to me isn't fair. Okay. Alyssa, I see your hand up. So I'm kind of sitting here with my mouth hanging open, which I have my camera on so you can see that, is that, well, first of all, as Darcy fairly points out, it is really difficult that we never know if the pool is sufficient because the CAF, as originally written, has never provided that information adequately. It certainly doesn't provide it three years after they have applied. And the statements of interest, right, aren't coming out until later in the process. So it's always been a very baseline sufficiency of the pool based on, right, we have a process that's basically based on a number and some demographic information if we've got it. It is the most basic baseline. It is not, will all these people work out, which is why we always say we may not, in fact, fact actually even fill all the spots given the pool that we've been provided. So I agree that that's an uncomfortable position to be in, but it is literally the position we're in every time. The part where my mouth is hanging open is this idea that the chair is so Machiavellian to as to sit there and rewrite these things in order to present a particular person, as opposed to what I would characterize as the absolute ignorance of most members of the public and the vast majority of town councilors as to what the planning board does on a day-to-day -day basis. So the idea that people living in ignorance would get to choose randomly what, how somebody presents at a particular interview based on that, as opposed to giving us some guidance as to what we're looking for from that body makes zero sense to me. And if you're concerned with you think that this Machiavellian person who's the chair has, has dictated this toward a particular person. First of all, we don't seem to have those people in the pool. And secondly, the point is they have made this public. 
which is incredibly important that they've said publicly this is what they want so that this comes out in a couple of ways darcy one is that if the other the members of the planning board say oh my god i can't believe you said that the planning board can get to us and tell us that that this is inappropriate but they can't do that if this isn't public if this is a private conversation then the other reason it's public is so the whole world can see what we're looking at and the whole world can say i know the chair said that but i think that's nutty i think these are the things you should be considering the whole point of having this information is to not be acting in a, in a vacuum of ignorance which is exactly what we're acting on when we're appointing people to the planning board which is something none of us except for steve who's not on this committee have actually served on and he obviously has an agenda too just like we all do that's how we got elected so I know I'm going on because I'm just like freaked out that this is considered inappropriate. This is much more public than anything that's ever done any place else, okay? People are being very clear about what they think. They know this statement's going out in public. The whole public can react to that and the public reads that just like the town councilors read that and go, I think she's obviously talking about her friend Betty Sue. Then clearly you disregard it but if you don't solicit this information and publish it publicly you are acting in a vacuum of ignorance and backroom deals and i just can't believe that you would recommend we go in that direction rather than that we actually get hold someone accountable for what they said publicly about what they think is important just just to provide um potentially for ourselves and also for the public some historical context on how we got here um you know, early on, there had been the conversation about, um, especially the town manager's process, who includes chairs um, in the interviews themselves. And we had talked about there is value in knowing uh, what the chair thinks as the person who's been helping to manage the body, but, um, but not wanting to actually have the chair sit in as part of interviews, especially um, potentially as we're facing right now in cases where the chair is up for reappointment. And so uh, this selection guidance was born out of a desire to have input from the body's chair and the appointment without necessarily including the chair as part of the interviews or the interview committee. And so our idea here was that the we would have a section of the selection guidance that would represent body input from the body's chair and uh, the decision we made back in January was to include that information verbatim. We're not going to try and edit it or anything like that. We don't want to misrepresent, um, but that it would be very clearly marked as this is from the body's chair. So that doesn't necessarily mean that we're endorsing what's said there. That doesn't necessarily um, mean that uh, we have to strictly apply that criteria. It's saying this is what we know from the body's chair and this is being considered because we have made a decision as a committee multiple times that it's important to hear from the body's chair. Um, and so that, that's how we got to this point of just putting it in verbatim. We're not going to edit it, but it's clearly marked as this is from planning board chair Christine Gray Mullen. Um, and so it's, it's, this isn't ours, right? This is, this is hers. And, but it's something that of course we're going to consider because the, the, the chair has knowledge that we don't. Sorry, Darcy, I didn't see your hand up. Darcy. Yeah, I, I guess I just feel like um, we can't edit what she has put in, but we could, we could omit um, uh, points that we feel are not appropriate to have in there, like B, and like the last letter, which I can't see because it's off the page, but um, that you know, her recommending that we do something that is against our own rules, um, which is, um, you know, I, I don't know how she thinks we're going to choose people that have over six years of experience um, unless we are, I don't know how that will happen because the people on the board need to get more experience to get that far. Um, so I, I, I don't know what she means by that. And there aren't that many people in the community that would fit that description. So I, I don't get that. Yeah. So let so, me just, let me like just. Those two things should be omitted. So let me clarify and hand over to George. So first of all, I think that it, it'd be very dangerous for us to start to decide what input from the chair we're going to include and what should be omitted. And I think that's why we've always decided we just put it in, but make it clear that it's from 
the body's chair. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean that we all have to agree with it or that we're going to strictly apply it, but it is clearly from the body's chair. But I think picking and choosing what we're going to include and what we're doesn't um, opens up a pretty dangerous door. I know you have an issue with B. I, I, you know, for me, I can't understand why you have an issue with B. But instead of us hashing out that kind of debate, it seems better to just say, this is what the chair says. This is not what our committee says. This is not what the council says. And just making that clear. Uh, just to be, as far as J goes, you know, it's not against our rule. Our rule is generally um, that, we, uh, that we say there is no fixed limit on length of service normally limited to two terms, three years in length, in cases where special trainer exper uh, expertise is required, longer periods of service may be appropriate. And so our rule doesn't say six years and you're done. It says normally limited to that, but there's no fixed limit. This is something that we debated and something that we adopted. And so what she is saying is, in this case for the planning board, we should be more frequently using this in cases where special trainer expertise longer periods of service may be appropriate. So nothing she's saying actually violates our rules because our rules specifically say no fixed limit on length. But again, we're saying this is what she says. It, it's not ours. We don't own this. She owns this. Uh, George, your hand is up. We, <clears throat> we have absolutely no business um, editing her submission or anybody's submission uh, when it's input from the chair. I don't even know how we would do it. Um, that would be an interesting process. Secondly, the discussion that uh, we're having um, is a certainly appropriate one, but it should be held when we actually have candidates in front of us and we're trying to decide who we want to recommend. So some of the issues that Darcy raises would certainly be raised in that discussion. Um, and it would be obviously in response or comment on some of the things that the chair has placed. But if we go through and edit it, then I guess we're just, <laughs> we're just commenting on our own, uh, you know, what we want. Um, so uh, no, we don't, we don't edit this. And uh, this discussion should take place later when we actually have candidates and we're looking at the criteria, trying to decide who to recommend. Darcy, is this a residual hand or current hand? Well, that's current. Um, I, I think it would be perfectly possible for us to, when we go get input from the chair, to say, we want general information about what you need, about the substance of the types of experience that you need, but we don't want you to say anything about political agendas. We don't want you to say anything about preferences around uh, areas that are our bailiwick, like term limits. Um, so that is what I would suggest is that we, sh we should um, say that to our chairs and say, you know, you can't say anything about these things. If you do, we'll exclude it. Oh, so uh, I'm going to hand over to Alyssa, but I do want to just make clear. So when, uh, uh, and excuse me, because I'm trying to pull up a document right now. Um, so this is the process that we're operating under now. Um, and under selection guidance, we say input from the body's chair. And so when I request input from the body's chair, and this is the same for the planning board chair and the ZBA chair, because we have done this twice before, and with both times, we just took whatever they sent us and put it in. I specifically, what I say to them are these three things. I say, we're putting together selection guidance. Can you please provide input on, and I literally just copy and paste one through three. Um, and so they, the guidance they're being given is to give us uh, skills and characteristics, knowledge and expertise, preferred knowledge to meet the needs of that body. Um, and so I just want to put that out there in case there were any um, questions about what I was actually asking for. Uh, Alyssa. So we ask for more generic information associated with the handout, which I drafted in both cases for the ZBA and the planning board, and then asked for input from staff and from members of those bodies to be clear that I didn't have it wrong. And so that handout is basically the generic piece of information that it sounds like Darcy is working toward. Um, so we already have that information available to everyone and it's part of our package and it's part of our recruitment process and part of our evaluation process. When it comes to saying that there are political, uh, they, we don't want them to talk about political agendas or term limits. Obviously, we could talk for hours about political agendas. I will just say this. There is nothing 
in Christine Gray Mullen's statement that is a political agenda. And so Darcy and I can fight about that all day long, but it is not a fact that there's anything in there about a political agenda because I don't perceive that to be a fact. So we're just gonna have to disagree on that. Um, as George said, the time that we t decide what matters to us and what doesn't matter to us is in the deliberation, right? Because that's when we have heard what people have to say. We've looked at all the documentation we've provided to them. And that's when we have that conversation. The other thing I wanna mention about forbidding people from talking about breaking our rules, for example, term limits, as Evan clearly pointed out, as is clearly stated on this document and elsewhere, that we do make exceptions. We have made exceptions. We will continue to make exceptions. And even if that weren't the case, Let's bear in mind, and I would think this would be especially relevant to people who are often on the end of a losing vote, is that you don't have to agree with what the council has done associated with term limits. And so if you don't agree with that, it is perfectly within your right as a chair of a committee to say, you are making the wrong decision here and here's why. That is exactly the kind of thing we need to be able to hear from a board. That is incredibly important. It doesn't matter that it doesn't agree with what we're doing. What matters is that they think it and they think it for a reason. And we should continue to hear that. We should, con I disagree with her, but we should continue to hear that. And the council that's in place three years from now may have a very different view of this scenario, just as we have had planning board members in the past serve for 12 years. We've had other people who are incredibly offended by the fact that we appointed any planning board member, no matter how much they walked on water for 12 years, because they didn't perceive it as fair. So it is incredibly important for people to be able to continue to express their opinion about what our rules are so that someday you may find a majority who agrees with you that those shouldn't be the term limits. You won't have that if you don't continue to get that input. So I absolutely disagree with trying to, you know, narrow down what we want them to be allowed to talk about and what not to talk about. That is just not acceptable to me. This is actually their big chance to tell us. I don't want them to write to me personally to tell me this. I want them to say it in public. Darcy. Um, I, I guess I just think that if we, if we have um, a list of the, of the items that they're supposed to address, the, that the body's chair is supposed to address, that we limit them to those subject areas and um and i i guess i would just argue that those two areas fall outside of it um so i think i've made my point there yeah i mean i think we're, we're you know i i would be uncomfortable with putting us in a situation where we're going to decide what is or is not a political agenda what is or is not i mean one of the things we said is uh, necessary experience. And if she's saying that, look, you need more than two terms um, to have the expertise and experience, you know, I think that that fits in. You might disagree, but I think that the safest way to go is to take whatever the chair says, put it in there, clearly labeled as this is from the chair, and then it's on us as a body, as the deliberative body, as, as the body who recommends to the appointing authority and as the appointing authority, to, to look at that and say, all right, this is what the chair says, and maybe we don't agree with it, maybe we don't necessarily apply it, but at least we have that information. Um, but I, I think doing anything where we're going to edit, omit, or limit the chair, um, I think it, it puts us into a really uncomfortable situation. Um, and certainly we didn't do it for the previous two selection guidance, not to say that we can't do things differently. Clearly we were changing processes as we learn new things, which I think is something that I've always really appreciated about this body. Alyssa, is that a current hand or a residual hand? Okay, so here's what I would like to be able to do. I would like to adopt this selection guidance, but I would like to do it in a way that permits me to edit um, H and J um, if the planning board chair wants to want to point those terms out and say, Alyssa's point about terms versus years and my point about, do you want to change this given 
now that we know one of the lawyers is leaving. Um, and so I'm not going to change it myself. It would only be if she requests it to be changed. Um, if she says, no, I want to keep it as terms, then I'm going to keep it as terms, even though, as Alyssa pointed out, um, that, that's a little confusing. So what I'd like to do is make a motion to adopt the planning board selection guidance as presented. Um, how do I want to word this motion, actually? Adopt the planning board selection guidance as presented, um, but allow the chair to revise section two in response to revisions from the planning board chair. Does that make sense? Unless I rely on you to tell me if that motion is garbage. I'm sure it's close enough. Okay, so I'm gonna make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, so seeing none, I'm going to call the question. So again, we're voting to adopt the planning board selection guidance, uh, allowing me to revise section two in response to revisions from the planning board chair. Uh, Brewer. Aye. Dumont. No. Uh, Ross is an aye. Ryan. Aye. And Swartz. Aye. Okay, so the vote is four in favor, one against. The motion prevails. And Darcy, just for the report's sake, can I get the, what, what do you want me to write there? Um, why don't I write that part of it? Can you get it to me? Uh, Alyssa, sorry, it's here. Oh, is it coming? Is it, does it need yeah. it tonight? The, cha the chair's report is the chair's report. The chair's report has always been the chair's report. We've had many conversations about the fact that we do not include minority reports. We include, we characterize minority opinions. Otherwise, all five of us get to write our own separate reports and that's not okay. So you tell Evan what you want it to say, what you, roughly what you want it to say, but he does not have to use it verbatim, just like he doesn't have to use anything I said verbatim or George says verbatim or Sarah says verbatim. Yes, Darcy. Um, I think that um, we, this, this sh is, should be the subject of further conversation. Um, I know that there, are, uh, there's at least one other committee that allows the minority opinion holder to write that part of the report. Um, so uh, CRC does that. So um, just saying, it, it, it is, that isn't a practice that the whole council follows. Um, but it isn't something we've agreed to on this committee. So you can't decide to change it by fiat until this committee decides it's going to do that. That's true. That's true. So um, um, we haven't decided not to do it. And so. So what, what I, what I want to do is. We have decided that in the past repeatedly we said we are including our minority opinions we are not writing separate minority opinions do not pretend we did not have this conversation we actively decided this months ago uh, i don't think we had an official decision on this so what what i'm what i'm going to ask cuz darcy my assumption is your your issue with the selection guidance was with regard to section two and concern about input from the chair. Is that correct? Yes, two B and two J two J. So here's here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the report. It probably won't be today. It's going to be for town council meeting next week, um, and then I we can. I'll, I'll talk with Darcy to make sure that her view is accurately represented. All right, so I want to move on. 
Um, so the next part of this was development of interview questions. Um, because I was very focused on pool stuff, um, I did not get to a point for that. And because we haven't declared the pool sufficient, I don't think that that is a uh, pressing concern right now. So we're not going to do, we're going to push the development of interview questions off. So I want to move on to section six, discussion of OCA process to recommend appointments to multiple member bodies appointed by the town council. And this is, this was an, something I added after the first posting. Um, and we're not looking to amend our process. We've already done that. We've already decided the process. What I wanted to look at is a document that I put in the packet. Um, that I'm going to bring up on the screen. Um, and so let me give you a little bit of, of context here. So after we do these planning board appointments, um, OCA is going to dissolve. Uh, already the appointing, uh, the recommendation for appointments to the finance committee has moved over to GOL. And George is now um, sharing in the fun of, of chairing that process. Um, and after we finish the uh, the authority to recommend uh, to planning board and ZBA will move over to CRC. Uh, what I recognized was sort of two things. One was born out of the conversation we had last week in which Alyssa sort of, sort of pointed out that there are a lot of things that I do logistically to make this work uh, that aren't written out in the process and that it would be useful to have that written down for people who inherit this. The second thing that came out was actually uh, Dorothy's comment from last town council meeting when she was reading through and she made the claim on something along the lines of, this is a lot of words and it's sort of hard to understand what's actually being done here. And I thought, hmm, that might be true. Um, and what I wanted to make sure we had is not just the process, but we had some clarity both for the chairs or the designees who will inherit these pro this process and having to implement it with the assumption that GOL and CRC will follow this. Um, and I also wanted to be able to provide some guidance to the public because this can be a bit confusing. And uh, I've heard from members of the public in the past that they, <laughs> they don't know what our process is. Um, and you know, one of the things that I've done is when I reach out to um, applicants once they're interested is I send them the process. Um, but I, they don't wanna read through five pages of this process, right? Um, and so my goal here was to have a single document that we could hand off to whoever um, is taking on recommendations to appointments, uh, assuming that they're gonna use our process that includes both the process, but sort of everything behind it. Um, and something that could be shared so people know what to do, uh, that I see is sort of almost the final report of this committee. Um, we can debate whether you feel like this is necessary, but I want to just run through what, what's in here. Um, and so hopefully I posted this last, I think, Wednesday so that you all could have some time to look through this. So the first several pages are just the process. We don't need to discuss that because we've discussed this already, we've adopted it, but the first, I think, seven pages or so um, are just the process as written. Um, page eight is guidance for the public. And this was my attempt. It, I think it's honestly still a little long. This was my attempt to, if some, if we had to explain to a member of the public what our process is, if they're interested in serving on the planning board and they want to know how to do that, being able to clearly articulate to them all of the different steps that are involved for them, um, the process is really the steps for us, but this is the steps for them on how to get appointed. Um, I broke it down into six steps, which maybe is a lot. Um, basically, they are learn, which is about reading the committee handouts, apply, which is about filling out the CAS, confirm interest, which is when the council reaches out and say, hey, you submitted a CF, you still interested, write the statement of interest, information on interviews, and then what happens after the interviews. And then the last piece, which is longer than I thought it would be, which I think is maybe a reminder of uh, how much we do to get these all together is guidance for chairs or appointment designees. And so this is something if George, uh, George has had the, the benefit and the privilege of serving on OCA and so has become familiar with this process. But in theory, if he had never attended an OCA meeting and now was handed this as chair of GOL, um, this would be a document that he could read through to figure out what he or whoever he delegates this task to, this task to needs to do to get this up. Um, and this is me 
to the best of my recollection, writing down all of the things I do that are not necessarily covered in the process to get us to a point uh, where we can make a recommendation. It's much longer than I expected, um, but I guess there's a lot more that I do. And then a few appendices just to give people examples of what it looks like to um, post an agenda for the interviews before you have names, post the agenda after you have names, post the deliberation agenda, and then examples of selection guidance and interview questions. And so the whole point of this is just to have some comprehensive document so that if tomorrow um, Pat, who has never been involved in OCA, becomes chair of GOL and has to deal with finance committee appointments, she could take this document first and just read through it and know everything she has to do. So um, what I want to ask this committee are a few things. One, do you feel like this is even something we should have? And I'm, I'm, I'm fine with you say, if you say, I know you did some work on this, but throw it out. Um, and then two, if you do think it's useful, things that you think should be added, removed, edited. So I will open the floor to discussion and I want to recognize Sarah. So I'm the person that asked you to do this, <laughs> just because being chair before, like you, I noticed, I mean, there's a lot of things that we started to do and Evan, you've totally like taken it to a new level. And I thank you for doing this because I think it is really important that the work of this committee and especially the, the chair who obviously knows all the ins and outs has recorded this for another committee. It's just gonna make it so much easier, especially since we have argued and agreed and talked for so many hours that having everything written down um, of how to do something and why is uh, amazing and something wonderful to hand to another committee who's gonna do these things. So thank you, Evan, so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, George. I want to uh, second or echo um, the remarks that have been made in terms of uh, what I uh, certainly what Evan suggested, I think, is uh, a, a kind of gift, if you wish, or as we as we ride off into the sunset, we can leave behind this document. Um, and I think it would be very valuable. Um, and it really does, I think, capture, uh, as uh, Sarah mentioned, uh, the enormous amount of work that all of us have put into this and discussion and so on. And uh, so I think it's a fitting, uh, you know, uh, final statement of what we've accomplished. And I think we've accomplished a great deal. Um, I'm very grateful to Evan for doing this. Um, it's certainly been useful to me. Um, I've been following many of the procedures. Putting it like this is very helpful, to say the least. So um, I'd very much like to see us, um, if not today, at some time soon, agree on this and then present it uh, to the council as sort of our final or parting uh, gift, if you wish. Um, the only thing I noticed, Evan and I may have just missed it, is because something I was struggling with recently is creating a vacancy notice for a committee. Um, Writing a vacancy notice? Yeah, just what it would look like. Um, and I eventually crafted one for finance that um, in retrospect, I realized could have been better. Um, okay. All right. but, uh, yeah. So that might be added as a, you know, just as a sample vacancy notice, and maybe it's there and I missed it because I haven't, I haven't read this entire document, I have to admit, um, but uh, I very much value it. I appreciate what you've done and I hope we can agree uh, soon to uh, endorse it and, and then uh, leave it and present it to the council. Okay. And, and no, you're right. I, I started this guidance for chairs or appointments designees with collected CAFs. I, I completely stepped over that. But I think you're right. I think that would be a useful thing to include. So thanks for pointing that out. Again, I'm trying. I was trying to write this all from memory, and so chances are I, I missed a couple things. Uh, Alyssa, this is why I really do try and let other people talk because George covered that exactly. And in fact, to poke a little at my friend George, of course, the previous announcements for vacancies were available on the town website, so you could have just copied them. But knowing that it's George and he didn't do that, I say we definitely need to have it in this process. We need to mention it, not only, you know, you do talk about the vacancy notice, but then to have it as an appendix and maybe include two different ones, like one where we were doing multiples and one where we were doing it for all three bodies and one where we were doing just for one, you know, whichever are your favorites kind of thing too, because 
one of the reasons we keep going over and over some of our material is because we realize new things as we go along. And so hopefully each time we write one of these, they're a little bit cleverer and a little bit more engaging. And including that as an appendix is great. And the other thing that needs to be included as the appendix is the committee handout. And I couldn't quite grasp where, again, because I read bits and pieces of this, not as a totality again, right before this meeting, is the committee handout is something that, you know, we know we're giving to people. It should also be something that's getting, you know, redistributed to them, et cetera. So we need to make sure that's incorporated beyond just the stage of the vacancy notice, just reflecting that in the written words that you've provided so eloquently. Okay. Um, is there any other comments on this document, things that you think should be um, added or things that you said, hey, is that right or need to be changed? Again, this was written from memory. So um, there, there's definitely potential that I, I missed over something. So if you saw something, um, any other thoughts? Okay, um, so seeing none, um, I am going to, so I'm not gonna have us vote on this then to adopt this today because I do wanna uh, make some changes in response to George and Alyssa's statements, um, especially adding a section on vacancy notice um, and adding vacancy notice to the um, appendix and also the committee handout. Um, any other final comments? Alyssa, is this a new hand or residual? Um, all right, so then um, I will bring, oh, Darcy. Um, I, I, I know that you all know that I have, I still have trouble with our changeover to this new process and um, I, um, I do have a few questions about how it will all work. Um, for example, um, one of the problems that we were trying to address was the fact that people had to repeatedly make out, fill out SOI or um, um, community activity forms. And um, doesn't the statement of interest have to be repeatedly filled out by repeat um, applicants? Yeah, so anytime, so right, they would have to do that. Now, to some extent, they could just reuse a one they had in the past. Um, but one of the ideas behind this is that should selection guidance change, um, that one of the benefits is that they will be able to write in response to the selection guidance, right? And so even though they have to write it again and again, potentially, it might not be the same every time because it's in response to the selection guidance. Um, but the other aspect of this is because SOIs are sort of a different beast, they're, they're there for the committee and posted publicly, um, they're not necessarily clogging up the database in the same way that the CAFs are. Um, but, but yeah, they would have to write an SOI again and again if they keep applying and keep not being appointed. Um, and I think that that could engender the same frustration. Um, but again, the idea here being that because the needs of that body might change, um, you know, let's say, let's say both David and Janet leave and all of a sudden the committee goes, oh my God, we don't have any lawyers anymore. We need a lawyer. Um, and that's considered like a big piece of selection guidance. Then someone maybe who has a legal background might edit their SOI to, to bring that out more or something. And so that, that's the idea. They would have to do it again, but because it's in response to selection guidance, um, it's more likely to be a more fluid document and change every time they submit it. Yeah, I guess I can't get away from the thought that we um, have really made this a whole lot more complicated than it needs to be. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, did, I did consider making a motion to reconsider today, but I didn't think I'd get anyone to second it. So I didn't do it. Um, uh, but, I, and you know, one other big concern I have is just what I already mentioned is that I don't understand how 
if we don't have people filing CAFs and filling out CAFs, how we can determine the sufficiency of the pool. Um, we've, we've always had a little blurb about each person to be able to do that. And I just don't see how we'll be able to do that with just a list of names. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I, I continue to have some real basic problems with, um, and also with just having one person in charge of assembling the pool uh, without the added check that we currently have of, of counselors uh, receiving the CAFs. Uh, I think taking that piece out um, is, is, is very concerning to me. Right. So, uh, so, so two things I would say is, so, so one is, I, I agree with you that I think the process is more complex than I would like it to be. I think to some extent, that's just a product of having the appointing authority be the council and having to do this um, through open meeting law. I think if we didn't have to follow open meeting law, we could simplify this a lot more. Um, but that is the reason I, I try to write out this sort of guidance for the public is, um, I do think that this is, this is a difficult thing for the public to navigate and there's a lot of uncertainty. And so um, my hope with this, and like I said, you know, this might still be too long. Um, maybe we need like a cartoon or something, but I think we need something to clearly communicate to the public. Look, if you're interested in serving the ZBA, here are the steps for this, because that's my, my big concern is making sure the public is clear on how to get here. Uh, George. We have bent over backwards and sideways and in between uh, to be transparent and to make this available to everyone so they know what we do and why we do it. And that's one of the reasons that I think this is a valuable document. Um, we will come back to it one more time, uh, but uh, I think this ideal of transparency, something that I've struggled with myself uh, a bit has really uh, triumphed. And I, I don't understand why uh, some of us are not actually ecstatic at the degree to which we are trying to make a, a public aware of what we do and what the process is. And so that we can simply say, here it is. Yes, it's complicated in parts, but um, here it is. And you can read it and you can, you can, uh, you'll know what it is um, and so transparency is triumph, it seems to me. Um, isn't that a good thing? I do not agree with that. So uh, the one thing I did want to just say, Darcy, though, is that I, I, don't, I don't understand the statement that people don't have to file. People, in order to be considered, do have to file CAFs. So CAFs all go to the council. Um, and so the council will see every CAF and then, you know, I built into this guidance for chairs, this table that we looked at today, um, because I do think one of the, you know, one thing that I never wanted to do was come to you and just say, here are the people who confirmed interest without telling you who had applied and who had not confirmed interest or who had said we want to withdraw. And so um, the idea that the, the counselors never will see CAFs is not true because everyone has to file a CAF all of those CAFs go to the council. And then part of the thing that I've done that I'm hoping other people mimic is saying, here's the full list of everyone who submitted a CAF and here are their responses. Um, and so that there's always, so the, the council always knows who's in the pool, who is applied, um, who is withdrawn, who has not responded. Um, but, but it's impossible to get on a body without filing a CAF. Darcy. I will not know who has applied if they applied three years ago. Well, you know, I ju we, you've seen, you saw the table today. You saw CAF from three years ago. When the two months after you start receiving the, the, the applications, I will know when you come with the request to see if there's, the pool is sufficient. But, <laughs> You know, in, in October, when we had those, October was when we applied for the planning board the last time uh, the application process was opened. And we didn't see the pool until February. 
Well, you saw that. I know there were a lot of things going on then that stretched it out, but we we um, we saw some of the applications that came in, but in the if in the new process, we will not see them as sitting counselors because we won't see the ones that came in um, from people that applied three years ago or whatever. I don't even understand how that's going to work. I don't understand how, how if somebody is interested in applying, but applied three years ago, how are they going to notify us? Um, so in the, in the same way that we've been, this, this didn't change with our, our amendment. It's the same way that it's always been, which is the chair of the designee reaches out to every person who submitted a CAF over the past three years and says, hey, are you still interested? That's what we did for planning board in um, uh, January. That's what we just did for ZBA. Um, so one of the applicants for planning board in January did not submit a new CAF. We, they were in the pool because I reached out to everyone who had applied to, who had submitted to CA for the past three years and said, Hey, remember on this date? In fact, I even put a draft of what the email looks like. And they said, yes. Um, same thing with ZBA. Some of those were new applications. Some of those were ones we had on file and we reached out. So that actually hasn't changed. Uh, the only thing that changed is we lengthened it from two years to three years. So, but uh, why, why would we but, not want everyone to file a new CAF so that all, all counselors would be able to see who was interested in the current um, uh, offering. I mean, this was, the, this was the conversation that we had last time and, and, and I'm not sure, given that we had this, we spent three hours debating this at our last meeting and we adopted this process. I, I don't know how much we want to uh, relitigate this. I do see Alyssa's hand and I want to make sure we recognize her. Thank you. Trying not to relitigate this because there are certain things we're just not going to agree on is that Mandy Joe actually pointed out that just and although she didn't say despite the cumbersome uh, databases staff have had to deal with in the past and Evan knows how difficult that's been for them is that actually it's incredibly easy when you see the new town council to say one of the thousands of pieces of information you need as a new town counselor is all the CAFs that have been filed in the last three years for planning board ZBA and non-voting members of the finance committee. That is exactly something that new town counselors should be getting just like they should be provided directly, not have to go hunt for it, but be provided directly with the charges for the planning board, the ZBA and the finance committee. So they know what they'll be appointed because we all expect all town counselors to be doing recruiting all the time. So it's going to be incredibly easy to do that. The reason, as I'm sure we've litigated in the past, that you don't have people do this over and over again, is that if somebody fills out a form and puts a bunch of information on it in November, and then in January fills out a form and doesn't put a bunch of information on it, which one are we supposed to choose? So the other point is that you want people to be able to express interest in July after we've already appointed everybody knowing that if an opening comes up or may not come up until the following June, that they have put their notice in, that they're interested. They should not have to just wait and see, is there a vacancy notice yet? Is there a vacancy notice yet? We are doing this to encourage more members of the public to go ahead and strike while the iron is hot after they watched a planning board meeting or read a newspaper article and said, you know, I really could be useful there. I know they're not necessarily doing it right now, but I'm gonna put my name in. And those names will be provided to the counselors as they come in in the next term. We could even do it once a year while we're still here. Okay, so um, I wanna move on because we're running short on time and there's two things that we need to discuss um, before we head out here today. Um, but this this document that we was on the screen, um, I am gonna bring back, I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna bring back. Um, and so we can look at it um, before we vote to send it off uh, to the council. So. Uh, one thing is minutes. We haven't voted on minutes for a while because our meetings keep going over and so we keep pushing them off. Um, I'd like to not do that anymore. Uh, there are a number of sets of minutes. We have um, March 30th, March 3rd, uh, uh, April 13th, 
two sets of minutes from the 16th, the interviews and the deliberation, and the 27th. They are all in the minutes folder. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look through them. I have looked over all of them except for April 27th. So um, I'm ready to vote on the 30th, the 13th, both of the 16th minutes. I don't personally know if I'm ready to vote on the 27th because I haven't looked at them. But if some of you have looked at them and, and I would be willing to take your, your, your word if they look okay. Um, but I don't know if y'all have had the opportunity. So I just wanna just get a sense of y'all if, if you feel ready to vote on all of these minutes, some of these minutes, um, if you've looked at them, um, especially those from uh, April 27th. So uh, minutes. I'm afraid I didn't look at them. Okay. Other other thoughts? We haven't done minutes in a while, and I, and I would like to, but I guess we can push them off one more meeting if, if folks want to be able to read through them. Um, like I said, I have not uh, looked at the, the 27th, and I know they came in. They're, they're very, very long, because um, I think they're sort of just the raw minute. So I, I don't feel like we should approve the 27th. The others, I, I do feel like we can. Um, but if people want to hold off so you have a chance to look at them, I'm open to that. I just need some response from y'all. Thoughts? Sarah? I wouldn't mind a little bit of time just to finish going over all of them, Evan, if that's okay, but I'll be ready next time to do uh, Alyssa? I have no opinion on the minutes, but I know we're running late and there was something else I wanted to mention about selection guidance before we go. So I'll do that when at the proper time. Okay. Um, so why don't, why, since, since Sarah has requested more time, um, since Darcy uh, um, hasn't had an opportunity to fully read them, why don't we hold them off um, until, until the next meeting? We'll have a lot of minutes to get through. Maybe we'll put that first on the agenda to make sure we get through them. Um, so that brings me to the second thing we have to discuss, which is when is our next meeting? So um, I say that because on our calendar, our next meeting is intended to be next week, um, May 18th at 9.30. Um, there are two things to consider here. So one is TSO, um, which many of us serve on, is also meeting that week. Um, it was scheduled for 11.30. I then falsely told TSO that it was 9.30, um, mixing up my dates, um, which probably confused many members of TSO. I know George was confused because he said, are you sure it's in my calendar for 11.30? I said, no, I'm positive it's 9.30 because I was wrong. Um, but... On top of this, looking at what's ahead of us, um, what we need to do, declare sufficiency of the pool, interview questions, adopt that document we just had. Uh, that document we just had, I don't think is super pressing because no other committee is taking up appointments right now except for GOL and they're already on their way and George I'm sure is doing a fantastic job of that without this document. Um, but he also has access to it if he's curious. Um, interview questions, we, don't, we haven't even declared the pool sufficient yet. So I don't feel like those are necessarily pressing. So the last thing is sufficiency of the pool. Um, and I would love to be able to declare this pool sufficient as soon as possible, but that requires warm bodies in the pool. I don't necessarily know if a week is enough time for us to do that. And so my thought on this is that given what's on our plate, it doesn't make sense for us to meet on May 18th because the major thing we have to do is to declare the pool sufficient. I just don't envision a whole lot's gonna change between now and next Monday. The following Monday is Memorial Day, so we're not gonna meet then. Our next scheduled meeting is on, um, after that is Monday, June 8th, but we could meet Monday, June 1. I know that might conflict with TSO. Um, we could talk about ways to do that. Um, but I, I would hope by that point we would have a bigger pool. So I guess my question for you all is, do you feel like we should meet next Monday or do you feel like we should put it off? And if we are going to put it off, should we see if we can work with TSO to schedule a meeting for Monday, June 1st, um, or just keep our meeting on Monday, June 8th? Sarah. So my 24th wedding anniversary is on June 1st. So y'all I won't be seeing me at all on June 1st. Um, and if you need me, um, I guess I would be, I'm open to any of the other 
uh, possibilities that you had. Okay. So say, picking a TSO or whatnot. Right. G, G, okay. Because right. our next one is June 8th after that. We could meet then. My only concern is we start running a little bit up against. Um, I mean, we have to ideally get these appointments done by June 30th. Could be done. Um, and certainly we did sufficiency of the pool and interview questions in January on January 5th for a January 22nd interview. Um, so it's certainly possible. Uh, other thoughts on whether we should meet on Monday or wait until June 1st or June 8th? Alyssa, I see a hand. Sorry, I keep trying to maximize, minimize windows to be able to do this. Um, I agree with you that we're probably not going to see anything happen for Monday since you're not giving us a quota and since we all have really complicated lives right now and can't devote this as our primary focus. I'm not really clear on what, if anything, is going to happen to increase this pool at all. And yet, at the same time, pushing us off that much further past June 1st seems like seems a bit problematic too. And so I wonder if it might make sense, Evan, like to go ahead and schedule the eighth, if that still works for people, everybody, um, mm -hmm. not schedule the first, if we know for sure Sarah can't be there. But then if you in the meantime, feel like you're getting enough information that you've heard back from more people, et cetera, since it's all funneling through you in the long run, that then we could set up a, you know, a totally off cycle meeting with 48 hours notice when five of us get, or even less, could get together and say, yes, now we have enough people. Because I too share the concern, and you said it, you know, we made it, but it's tight in terms of sufficiency of the pool, interview questions, and the actual interview scheduling with enough notice, right? Because we hold ourselves to this large amount of notice before the interviews actually take place. So we're just getting kind of tight. Okay. I think, I think that's reasonable. So I think my, my thought on this, and if someone has a different idea, please tell me. Um, but my thought is we won't hold the meeting on the 18th because it doesn't seem like it's necessary at this point. It doesn't seem like the pool will change. Uh, we will hold the meeting on the June 8th, um, but, it, but we're going to leave open the door to an off cycle sort of special meeting on a different day, um, strictly to do sufficiency of the pool and interview questions. Should we all of a sudden start getting some applicants in? Is that amenable to people? Okay, so we will do that. So I'm not, we're not going to hold the meeting on the 18th, but you, that which means you have a little bit more time for your homework, which is to talk to people and convince them that they should serve on the planning board. Um, Alyssa, you had something you said you wanted to say? Yes, yes, I did. Um, so you're going to go off to talk to Christine about the two things to make sure that, you know, they're still her words, right? We're not editing what she said. And then that document will be dated as voted today. Right. And then when that document is edited and dated as of today, then I think it would be a great idea, just like we directed you to have the town manager reach out. I think it would be a great idea for us to now, send the selection criteria out to all the town counselors and the entire planning board, not just you know to say this for the chair, but to the planning board to ask them to help us recruit and say that we, we need more people and that's why they haven't seen interviewing being scheduled. I think reaching out to the planning board members, you know, asking them to communicate to all members and all town counselors right now is way more a better idea than us saying, well, we still haven't, it's like, you know, we got, we got lots of colleagues, let them work on this too. Okay, I'll do that. I, I was planning once we had selection guidance to send an email to the council to start soliciting interview questions. Um, so I would probably just send one email that just says, here's the selection guidance, please send interview questions. And also please help us find living people to serve on the planning board. Uh, any other final comments before we adjourn today? Okay, so our next, oh, Darcy. I just wanted to say um, and that I will contact you people that are on TSO about whether we wanna possibly move 
our meeting up to 9.30 on the 18th, but that's, I'll, I'll email you separately. Okay. Um, okay, there is no public comment because there is no public present. Um, and so with that, our next scheduled meeting is going to be June 8th, um, but there may be the potential that we have a special meeting in the interim on an, on an off day. Um, and with that, I am going to adjourn us at 11.31 a.m. Thank you all.